Decompressing a tension pneumothorax with a needle chest decompression can be a life-saving procedure. However, there are significant risks if it's not correctly performed. The first step is to take proper infectious disease precautions. Since this is an invasive procedure, a possibility exists for exposure to the patient's blood. The air in the chest cavity may propel potential infectious material toward the medic. The use of gloves, gowns, eye and face protection are recommended. Next, prepare your equipment. At minimum, you will need a 2-inch 14-gauge over-the-needle catheter, 18-gauge for pediatric patients antiseptic wipes to clean the site, tape to secure the catheter, and a mechanism for creating a one-way valve. Unless you have access to commercial decompression supplies, the simplest way to construct a one-way valve is to insert the IV catheter into the finger of a glove. Additionally, a 10 milliliter syringe filled with 5 milliliters of normal saline attached to the needle may be helpful. Identify the location for needle insertion. Remember, a tension pneumothorax may affect breath sounds on both sides of the chest. Be sure you are on the side of the injury. Find the midclavicular line on the affected side. Studies have shown that a significant number of healthcare professionals have difficulty locating the midclavicular line and actually insert the catheter medial to the ideal location. This poses significant risk if the needle is inserted into the mediastinum. The midclavicular line is located midway between the midsternal line and the axillary line. To find the second intercostal space, palpate downward until you feel the third rib. The first rib is not palpable since it is behind the clavicle. The space directly above the third rib is the second intercostal space. You may need to apply substantial pressure to feel the ribs on patients with significant soft tissue over the area. Prep the site, then insert the catheter just above the third rib at a 90 degree angle. Once you reach the pleural space, you should hear a hiss as air escapes. Or, if you have attached a saline filled syringe, you will see bubbles in the fluid. Stop advancing the needle and thread the catheter off until the hub reaches the skin. Remove the needle and secure the catheter with tape. You should note air escaping on exhalation and the glove finger collapsing on inhalation if your one-way valve is working correctly. Observe the patient for improvement. Over time, as air escapes from the thoracic cavity, the patient's respiratory efforts should improve. You may insert additional catheters to speed decompression if your patient's condition warrants.